guys my name is crystal and welcome to my youtube channel it is wednesday morning right so i'm here in my flat in rochester i'd run out of cat litter cat litter from Tesco's is about £2.20. £2.20 for a massive bag of cat litter, which lasts me a week with these cats because I've got two. So I normally get two bags of cat litter because I've got two cats. I've got two litter trays, so they've got one each. And I clean them out every day. I ran out of cat litter, so... In the co-op, you know, they used to have a bag of cat litter that was £5. And it lasted ages because it, it, there was a lot of it. This, cat sand, and I've got no other choice but to get this, is £7.50. £7.50 and it doesn't last very long. Looks like a big bag, doesn't it? It doesn't last very long. Because you need more of it to fill the, the, the cat litter tray than other cat litters. £7.50. Um, so, you know, when, you do a sh when, you, when I do a shopping, I've got two cats and a dog. So you have to buy dog and cat food. So you've spent £30 before you've even started, right, getting food for your pets. So whiskers is four pounds fifty at the moment. This is poultry feasts whiskers. That's four pounds fifty. So that's that's twelve pounds gone before we've even started there. So that's twelve pounds on two items before we've even started going through the rest. When you try and eat healthy, it's expensive. Fruit, fish, meat is expensive. That's why a lot of us live on unhealthy diets. So I'm just going to show you that I've spent a lot of money. There's not much there for the money that I've spent. £12.50 was already spent on cat food and cat litter. I had scratch card winnings, which I've redeemed in the local co-op. So I, I won some money on scratch cards. So I used that to come off my shopping bill. Um, so we got some Devon custard, which used to be a pound, which is about one pound sixty. I've got a receipt. I got a receipt this morning. My shopping. Um, I was in the Rochester Riverside co-op. At 20 past 9 this morning, well, 9.19 this morning, there was another lady with a yellow coat and a beanie hat coming out of the co-op as I was going in. <laughs> um, so we got some mashed potato, which is out by the 20th of January. Got mashed potato. Uh, we've got some corned beef because I like corned beef hash. We've got some garlic and herb chicken breast slices, which is meat, isn't it? It's meat. So we've got some meat there. I've got tuna in my cupboard. I had tuna yesterday. Um, we've got some, I got some thin sliced smoked ham. I also got some chicken as well. And we've got some innocent smooth orange juice. Innocent. Um, I did, I, I fancied yesterday a sponge pudding with custard. So I've got Auntie's delicious golden syrup steam puds, which go in the microwave with an, and, and are nice with a bit of custard on them. Right. And uh, I told you I wanted to get my vitamin D. So we've, and calcium is in milk. So we've got some semi skim milk, not full fat. High in vit Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. High in vitamin D. No artificial colours or flavours. If you go on the back of it with the nutritional information, the vitamins, 
vitamin D, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folic acid, vitamin B12. Right? So we're having a bowl of cereal in the morning. Um, because I'm going through the menopause myself, I'm a female, I'm getting very, very tired. And also you lose density in your bones and you've got to keep yourself healthy and fit. Um, I don't want to become old and keep um, breaking bones. So I'm trying to exercise as well, but not too much because I've hurt my foot. So I'm trying to, 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 it is expensive to, so how rich people live eating caviar and the greatest joints of roast beef, it's expensive and it's impossible for, for ordinary people to have a decent diet while the cost of living prices are so high. Sweets are cheap, crisps are cheap, but a decent food is expensive. Okay, so 12 quid, two pet items. That's just for the cats. So I've had a dog as well. It's, it's, um, it's extortionate. It looks like you've hardly got anything. And going on to the Sun newspaper this morning, and I've been talking about abuse and things on my YouTube. So why did authorities not save this tragic toddler? The Sun this morning, Wednesday, January the 17th. A boy of two starved to death next to his dad's body after social services missed chances to save him. Bronson Battersby, Bronson Battersby, was found curled up with heart victim Kenneth 14 days after they were last seen. Bronson's mum Sarah, 43, said, we have to be able to rely on social workers to keep our children safe. A rapid review has been launched in Skegness, Lincolnshire. And the full story is on page four and five. <laughs> Left alone with his dead dad for at least a week. Now, how the hell did that happen? How was that allowed to happen? Two-year-old Bronson, last seen Boxing Day, Found on January 9th after two social work visits. Um, I, I wasn't going to go out today, but I'd run out of cat litter and I had to go to the shop. And I, you know, I don't get a newspaper every single day. So I got one today. Last night I was talking about in my YouTube videos about children being abused and forgotten about and speaking out about children that had been abused and, and trying to be a voice for them. So we've got an abused toddler on the front page of the sun this morning. Just quickly flicking through it. Somebody tried to get information out of me yesterday on my TikTok, but I refused to speak to bullies that uh, try and get things out of me in messages on my social media. Uh, they're just prying and nosy, and um, that's why I'm a, a lot of the time now I'm quiet in my flat. I do my YouTube videos, I do my TikTok, but I'm, I'm mainly quiet in my flat, especially at night. Um, I haven't heard from my mum this morning, no doubt she'll ring later on. It must be terrible with not having a television um, to drown out. Well, I, I, I don't think her place is as noisy as mine is, but I couldn't live without a TV set or a radio on or something. 
to drown out the noise outside and, and unwanted noise as well. So I went out to the co-op, I went up Corey's Road, there was a, a couple sat on the pack, well, the, the female was sat on the pavement, the male was hooded and he started coughing like him upstairs <laughs> as I'm walking up Corey's Road. Uh, the woman was sat on the pavement. Um, I walked up, further up, um, it was busy. There was a woman coming out of the co-op in a yellow coat and I think it was a red beanie hat. Mine's blue or orange. Walked into the co-op and I thought, yeah, I'm not in the mood for being taken the piss out of because it's my mum. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mum. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, Mum. That's good. It's a bit cold today, isn't it? Yeah, it is cold. It was minus, I think, minus two yesterday. Yeah, oh, my God. Okay, then. So I called you and I said hello. And then can I give you another ring later on? Mum, have you done anything about your television? No. Uh, well, I think you should. <laughs> no, actually, I felt a little bit better not having it on. So what what do you do? You just sit down with nothing? No, I do a bit of housework and everything. I'm quite happy. Well, as long as you are... No, I don't, I don't miss the television at all. You don't miss it. Fair enough. That's good, yeah. If I do feel like getting one, I will. I, you know, I will. You know that. Yeah, but other than that, no, I've got nothing to complain about, you know. No, I'm not saying you're complaining. I'm just saying it's nice to have some, like, you know, some sort of noise in the background, even if you're not watching it. No, anyway, we'll see what happens. And anyway, I'm not too bad today. I'm not too. I'm, I've still got a bit, bit aches and pains, but you know, I'm coping with it. I hope you're all right, and I'll give you another ring later on. All right. All right, mum. So you've heard my mum, she's quite happy without the television set, she's quite happy without it. Um, where was I? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go through what's happened in my lifetime since a child right up till now so it helps other people understand why I'm like I am. Why at the moment I'm completely happy on my own. Why I've decided to do videos and not be pressurised into doing videos with my clothes half on and half off. You can get views on your channels without stripping your clothes off or degrading yourself. Right? So I'm, I'm just proving that you don't have to take your clothes off to get views. Because you don't. I'm not being pressurised into sleeping around. Um, I'm just concentrating on trying to help other people. Um, I'm going to see if I can like set up a channel or something to do with abuse. And like being listening here for other people that have gone through what I've gone through. Um, people are trying to shut me up, shut me down and make me feel awful about myself. But I actually want to help people uh, and, and uh, you know, why have social services failed this little boy for a start? What can you do? I find that sometimes social services concentrate on the wrong people, take children away from women that need help and support not their kids taken off them and they are letting people that really need help slip through the net slip they're so concentrating on taking women's children away that that need to be with their mothers but the mothers just need a bit of help maybe they've been in a domestic violence relationship 
and a lot of ex-partners blame the woman and they report the woman to social services and they have the children taken off their partner because their partners left them right and we're letting kids that really need help not get the help that they need because i think social services are concentrating on the wrong things and they seem to my child was taken away from me i'll be blatantly honest and i needed help and support not my child taken away so they give your child to in his case he was given to an older couple and he had an accident in their care. He had an accident in social services care. I'd looked after my child right up till two and a half years old. Yes, I was poor. I was in needing, needing help. I was suffering domestic violence. They decided to help the perpetrator. They didn't help me. They helped the person that had reported me. And of course he was pissed off because I left him. So, he, he, you know, they, that's what they do. They report you to social services. They tell everyone you're nuts so that it doesn't come out what they're doing. That's what they do. And you shouldn't side with, with, with people. You should get the whole perspective, the interview. It's all right, the, the, the ex-partner going to social services or somewhere and saying, oh, my wife, my, wife, my girlfriend's this, she's done that. But no one came up to me and, and, and wanted my side of the story. They just dismissed me and decided to believe somebody else. Right? So I want it brought to attention that domestic violence is dangerous. It kills women every day of the week. An abusive, violent partner. Right, and that's one of the tactics they use when you leave them is to report you to social services or tell everybody that you're a raving lunatic because they don't want what they've done to you to come out. It's as simple as that. And in my case, I think my children were left in danger. You need to have extensive tr training to be a social worker and work in social services. Um, I was getting women in their 20s trying to tell me tell me how to, to, to bring a child up and I'd brought three children up already. It was more like a game with them. When I had contact sessions with my fourth child, um, they was it was like women in their 20s that haven't had children telling me what to do when I'd already brought up three kids. The whole world is a mess. And we know, we know for a fact that the police, I mean, they're in prison. A couple of former police officers are in jail for attacking and murdering women. Right, so who are we employing in social services? Have they been vetted? You know, how much training have they had? And how possibly could women and men in their, their teens and 20s know what it's like to be a victim of domestic violence and abuse? How, how possibly could they? Do you know one of the social workers that uh, took my son away from me he was about 19 years old 19 with no social work experience apart from six months training six months I'm, i am angry and i am cross right because my adopted son is 18 years old now and i still can't see him because i you know he's still being controlled isn't he and told lies and crap about me it's not fair it's unjust and they've caused more harm than the social services in my case have caused more harm than they've done any good, 
And that's a fact. See you later.